Hello everybody, and welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, or on Twitter, Razzle11Grinds. Going to take a look at today's pitching options, uh, today being the 14th of April. Going to have to bounce back from yesterday's video where I uh, pointed out that I was going to be fading Joe Ryan. That did not work. But long season, we're going to have some of those calls that just don't work in our favor, and that one definitely hurt. But let's take a look here at Friday. Uh, we have uh, roughly a 12-game main slate on both sides, I believe. Uh, if you're playing the early three-gamer, uh, good luck in the pitching department because it looks disgusting, to be honest. But... With that said, let's take a look at some pitchers that are standing out for various reasons. We're going to look at Drew Rasmussen, no relation, uh, at least as far as I know. Taking on the Blue Jays, uh, on paper the matchup isn't the greatest, but the Blue Jays just struggled with the Tigers pitching. Uh, and we know how hot Tampa Bay is, obviously, winning 13 in a row to begin the season. But also their pitching has been phenomenal. Uh, Rasmussen has been sensational. Uh, obviously, weaker opponent, but uh, he's been so good. I, I think we have to ride him here. But paying 10K for him does seem aggressive, to be honest. Um, so if you came into the comments for this video and told me that you were going to fade him, I actually wouldn't argue against it. Uh, I'm just going to stay committed to the way that the Rays are playing uh, and rely on a guy like Drew Rasmussen. Senga, I'm a little shocked at the price point. 10.4K seems aggressive as well. Uh, but he gets a good matchup against Oakland. Uh, the one worry I do have is K numbers in Oakland uh, do take a slight hit. But... Uh, him being new to the major leagues, Oakland doesn't really have a lot of book on him. Uh, it should be a good spot for us today. Uh, and honestly, I can see people fading the 10K plus guys um, just based on lack of name recognition. So maybe they come in lower owned. I haven't, you know, been able to dig into to ownership just yet. So, uh, but I'm definitely on the two 10K plus guys. I'm going to go to a guy that I'm probably going to be fading again uh, is going to be Charlie Morton. I have been, I've faded him in both starts so far. Um, the San Diego one kind of hurt a little bit initially, but then he, he did give up a couple runs. So I'm just not a big fan of Morton, especially on the road now. Um, coming back from injuries, ineffectiveness last year on the road. I'm just not looking to utilize him. I know Kansas City is probably a pretty solid matchup for him, uh, but he's just allowing way too many base runners right now. Uh, and when you allow a ton of base runners, you're walking a fine line. And especially on DraftKings, I don't really want to deal with you know, him going five to six innings but allowing eight to 12 base runners. Um, he doesn't really have the, the huge K upside to negate you know, maybe allowing nine guys to reach base like you did last game um, or 11 like you did in the first start against St. Louis. So Charlie Morton's going to be on my fade list today. Uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, just underneath Charlie Morton, uh, I'm going to look to play a little bit of Cal Quantrill. Hasn't looked very sharp. Um, obviously facing Seattle, different kind of animal than facing Washington. But the K numbers aren't there. And similar to Morton, he is allowing a lot of base runners. So uh, I'm probably going to take an underweight approach on Cal Quantrill, even in a great matchup. And we'll go to Patrick Sandoval is going to be one of my plays today. Uh, has looked pretty solid to begin the season. His K numbers haven't been there, which is a little worrisome. Uh, but he's not allowing a ton of base runners with a whip of one so far. 
And the Red Sox lineup definitely take, took a huge hit with Duvall going down with injury. Uh, Sandoval being left-handed has the ability to I don't, limit, you know, the, the two of the better, actually three of the better Red Sox hitters with Verdugo, Yoshida, and Devers. Uh, so that's kind of key for me is being able to attack, you know, that's three out of the top four hitters roughly, you know, a majority of the time in their lineups. So uh, I actually like the matchup quite a bit. I haven't looked at any Vegas information, but Sandoval is one that I just I keep playing, uh, and I like the 8500 price tag uh, down from the 9K mark that he was to begin the season. And we'll scroll down just a little bit. Uh, this Milwaukee-San Diego matchup with Lauer and Waka. Um, I'm really interested in that combination, but I need to dig in. There are two pitchers that I I have to kind of figure out for this matchup, so I'm not going to make a recommendation one way or the other. Uh, but a name that I will be on will be Justin Steele. Love the way he's throwing the baseball right now. I know it's against the Dodgers. That's obviously worrisome. But I do like the fact that he's capable of, you know, containing Freeman, Max Muncy, and those guys. Um, I actually prefer the Dodgers against right-handed pitching overall. But Steele is just a guy that he looks so good out there. Uh, struggled with some walks last time out, but uh, I think at 7,900 makes – a lot of sense as an SP2 on DraftKings. I will be using a little bit of Brady Singer, kind of my hold my nose and play guy. Uh, I know it's taken on Atlanta. Not the greatest matchup, but I, I do like you know what he's capable of doing. I know Toronto hasn't been amazing to be in the season, but he did shut them down pretty well. Uh, his price has dropped 1200 since his last start. So I am going to be on the Singer train for GPP-wise. Um, with that said, I'm definitely going to stack against him a fair number. And two guys that then I'm going to be on as well um, down in this range is going to be Noah Syndergaard. Looked terrible in the second start again. It's Arizona. Uh but I, I think he can bounce back and be strong enough uh, in this ballpark. Uh, his first start against Arizona is great. So uh, the one worry is obviously 78 and then 72 pitches. But I think he's he's worth uh, a couple shares at this price point. And the one other name there that stands out is the 6,800 price tag on Martin Perez. Not really sure why he's 6,800. I know it's Houston, and Houston by name is a tough matchup, but uh, left-handed pitchers against Houston are going to carry some, some weight for me going forward. Uh, and especially a guy like Perez, who's you know faced them plenty, is capable of containing left-handed hitters, and that's key for me when facing Houston. So... Uh, Martin Perez is just underpriced, I think, and I know he was just 7,300 in his last start, but I think he needs to be more like an 8K pitcher at this point in his career. So there we have it. Um, we can definitely add more pitching, but I could talk about pitching all day long. We're approaching 10 minutes on this video already. So, uh, yeah, hit the comments. Let me know. You know, some guys that stand out for you. There, there are actually quite a few borderline, you know, GPP playable pitchers on this slate. It's just a slate that doesn't have any of the, the stud aces at this point. So, thank you for checking out this video. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe, subscribe button. Helps us out a ton. Uh, you can use promo code REZ for 10% off your monthly membership at DFS Army. I will put links in the description below.
and just like every day, best of luck.